This video is presented by EA Game Changers. EA invited me out to Sweden and paid for my trip to come capture some very early gameplay. This gameplay is from a work in progress build of the game and things are still subject to change before the game comes out in February. Tired of that yet? Yeah, me too. Sorry. Hey guys, so I finally, finally get to drop my Storm gameplay, which I'm pretty excited about because I think I had the most fun playing the Storm during my time in Sweden. I'm also excited because the dudes we were fighting in the gameplay that I'm going to show you were actually kind of tough. So maybe, maybe it'll give you a little bit of a better idea of how more difficult content will need to be tackled. Unfortunately, I'm only allowed to show 10 minutes of gameplay, so there will be some jumps and cuts and stuff like that. Also, this is my first time playing Storm, so please be gentle. This reveal is all about free roam. When you're in free roam, you're not doing a mission, you're just kind of going around, doing stuff, finding events in the wild. If you're familiar with Destiny, then most of what I'm going to say right now will feel familiar as well. When you're out in free roam, you'll come across world events happening in the wild that spawn in every so often. Examples of these world events include defending the sentinels against an attack and freeing them from traps, fighting an ash titan, recovering relic pieces, etc, etc, you get it. They are little events that spawn in, will take about 5 minutes or so to do, and then you'll snag some loot and you'll move on. I believe free roam can be made more difficult in the same way that missions can, which is probably why what I'm showing ended up being somewhat difficult. The Division's global events are not exactly the same as to how you can tune difficulty in Anthem. Anthem has set difficulties that you can change to whatever you want, as opposed to a Division global event, which is a set of modifiers that last for a week and come around every so often. And obviously in Destiny, you can't set the difficulty of free roam at all, everything is a set level. I don't know how much more involved free roam will or will not get beyond this at the moment though. This is still kind of early stuff. The place we are currently in are some ruins that only open up after completing a specific world event outside of the entrance. We're in some sort of cave dungeon like thing. If you know Destiny, I would say it's sort of like a lost sector in nature. This one was pretty darn large. I don't know the size of all of them, but I imagine there's quite a range to them. I did like the fact that only certain places become accessible after doing a world event, specifically for the open world part of the game. Feels like it gives it much more of a mysterious feel on the story or lore side of things, but I imagine much like certain Destiny activities, it may get old having to wait for a specific event to happen before you can go do something that gives you some loot in case there's some very specific loot in very specific locations. As for the storm itself, the storm lives and breathes via hover. The storm's shield is greatly increased in effectiveness when hovering and the storm in general gets a super long hover timer but you're out in the open a lot, so you need to position yourself quite well since your health is low. Storm is pretty glass cannon, lots of damage output, lots of combo potential, but again, very low health. You'll probably see me get bursted hard, especially when on the ground. You do not want to be on the ground too much as the storm because your shield is not great when you're just standing around. As a result, the storm isn't really in the thick of it too much. You're going to be staying back and just dropping massive damage attacks or other spells and then using guns while you're on cooldown but those cooldowns are pretty short for example maybe don't use the regular machine gun that i'm using right now i'm using the starter ability kit with the storm we have the giant lightning bolt attack with a pretty big radius and then 10 charges of an ice attack that stacks up freezing on a target both of which recharge really fast if an enemy is frozen, they are vulnerable to a combo attack, and freezing stuff is pretty good, but the stronger the enemy, the harder it is to freeze. I know, revolutionary concept. The ultimate attack is a series of three even larger bolt attacks doing even more damage, all of different elements. The weapons I'm using, well, one of them's not really exciting, but the sniper rifle was pretty fun. You take a little time to scope in, charge up the shot, and then you fire a shot, and then the shot is actually an explosion. So, you know, that's pretty fun. 
So yeah, I definitely enjoyed this part of the capture session a bit more because things were actually threatening and there were a lot more dudes around so that means we didn't have to really hold back and make sure the other person can get some gameplay and I can get some gameplay. We could just go at it. Again, being the storm, I'm away from the action. I'm not in the thick of it because I'm not designed to be in the thick of it. So if the gameplay doesn't look as crazy as I was saying that it might be, sorry about that. Uh, I just had a really good time playing this and getting this gameplay. So I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of it. If you have questions, drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. Here we go. It's an ambush. Dominion coming in hot. We're not done yet.
down. Hopefully, that sends a message to the rest. The situation is dangerous. We need to clear out this threat. <laughs> Look at that! We're running! That was well handled, Freelancer. We made it thanks to you.